Joel Swindell. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see y'all, man. Congrats on the new album. Thank you so much. It's been, been a while. Gonna play a little something and talk about it specifically in a second. I do have a gift for you. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. It's a long-standing tradition here on this show. Look what I have for you. Nuh-uh. <laughs> This is the shirt. That's yours. This, this is you, the shirt. We know we're passing it back and forth. That, okay, I like every that. Every time Cole, I told him, every time he comes in, we pass the Crook and Chase shirt back and forth. <laughs> That's great. This is one of my favorite retro shirts that you gave me. Yeah, yeah. And I loved it right. so much. I'm now returning it to you. Well, thank you. And the next time you come in in a few months, you bring it back and we'll get our wares. All right, there we so go. So here we go. There, a gift for Cole Swindell. Yeah. Thank, oh, thank you. Thank cool. you. Love it. A gift that he gave me. Yeah. Nothing <laughs> says friendship like that. <laughs> Uh, hey, everything good? It's good, man. Yeah. The new record's out. It's called Stereotype. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about, you know, why people name records. And, you know, a lot of times it's after a song that they feel means something on the record. And sometimes it's also a subtle way of going, hey, this is me. Yeah. So what what do you think the stereotype is about you that isn't true? Man, that's a, uh, a tough question. I, I wish I knew that answer. But I, I think for me it's probably just how my career started. I think a lot of people, you know, I moved to town and a lot of it's been said many times. I know I sold T-shirts and did what I had to do, but I just wanted to be around the music, and I wanted to be a songwriter first. And I, I just think that um, everybody's always going to look at it as overnight success. But there was a lot of years where I wrote a lot of crappy songs and a lot of uh, you know it was just tough and not knowing if I was going to make it. And I think you know you come out with a fun first song, and then people think that's all you are is like this. chilling. And it just, comes yeah, out. People right, are like, right? He must he's the chilling at fun guy. Ex exactly, yeah. and I think that's my what the point I'm trying to make is just maybe at some point. But the, those kind of songs have allowed me to release songs like "You Should Be Here," "Break Up in the End," the the other side of things I get to to sing about too. So I just feel like I and a, a lot of artists are just people in general are stereotyped. I, I just think that it was a I love the title, I love that song, but also it, I think it had a little deeper meaning for me too. So I want them to know that there's a song for everybody on this album, I hope. You know, I made a pact with you, I think three appearances ago, where I said I would never bring up the t-shirt thing again, and yeah. nor am I now. No, don't, yeah. Because I knew that would irritate me that every interview I went into, they were like, hey, so you I'm not even gonna say it again right yeah, now. that's fine, let's move on. And so, uh, what do you, th stereotype me. Let's do that, what do you oh, think? Boy, yeah, yeah, trouble. yeah, come on. You can give a stereotype you think people have, <laughs> that you know is or isn't true. Let me, give me a little something here. <laughs> Stereotype oh me in any way whatsoever. I don't. I it mean, can be my boyish good looks. You think that it can? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think you're a pretty big deal, and I, I don't know if people that don't know you that what a, a good dude you are. And to me, I mean, you've been y'all supported me from day one, so I don't really. I mean, I know you're a big Arkansas. Uh, I, I was terrible. Uh, you, you know, I'm not good at that. That's, <laughs> that's not even fair. Uh, Cole Swindell is here. He's got a whole. Whole new album. I actually want to play one of the songs full right now, if you don't okay. mind. Yeah. Which I, you shouldn't, because I'm going to really promote the heck out of this. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. <laughs> I want to play She Had Me at Heads, Carolina. Okay. And when I listened to it, obviously I was struck by it, because one, it's a super catchy song, and two, Heads, Carolina. You definitely hear that in the song. Absolutely. Uh, tell me about why you picked it, like what the situation was with this song in general. Yeah, and that's the you know the first thing when I talk about this song, I want people to know that how much I love the original song and Joe D. Messina, uh, just, not just that song, all of, all of her stuff, you know. But, um, y you know, I think when we picked that one, I, my first thing was we got to reach out to the songwriters, um, Tim Nichols, Mark Sanders. I wanted them to know that what our idea was. And me and Thomas Fred had talked about this last year on tour. Like, what if we took a 90s country song and just kind of put a spin on it? But uh, obviously we got to get all the the um, okays and the blessings from the original folks. And so that was our first step was knowing the songwriters. We had their blessing. They were excited about it that we had picked that one. Because I think out of a lot of 90s country songs we love, I don't think anybody would have thought we'd have done that one. And uh, to do a song that I feel like so many people have probably got up and karaoke and sang and, and just um, put a spin on it about just falling for a girl that got up and was singing some Jody Messina is a little different angle, but I'm you know, I'm just glad it's out there for, for me. The few people that have heard it, of, it's just the one they go to because it takes you back. I think it, it does from the very first note. It is that guitar lick. It is the song. But um, I reached out to Joe D and just let her know what a fan I was and how much I appreciated the original. And if she ever wants to be a part of it in any way, that I, I certainly wanted to be. So. so from his new album, Stereotype, which is out now, and here, here's the, the writing credits on this. It is like an all-star team. <laughs> it's, so it's Cole. Ashley Gorley, who has, I think, more number ones than anybody else in the history of country music. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Frazier, uh, Thomas Rhett, and then the two original songwriters. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Talking about his new album, Stereotype, which is out now. And 
you know, just thinking about you as a kid, I didn't know you were such a good football player until I guess I'd seen you post some throwback pictures. <laughs> How good of a ball player were you? Because you were all you were you were an award winning football player. I mean, yeah, I was all state, but I also graduated with twenty three people. So but let's do- <laughs> fair, fair enough, I graduated with the same amount, right? Yeah. So you you still got to be really good to be all state, right? Yeah, no, I I mean I that's all I did growing up playing sports. I always loved music, but I was just always on a ball field. And what, after one sport ended, it was the next. And uh, you know, baseball was my first love. Uh, basketball, then football came probably in high school. And uh, it's just I, I'm thankful though because when I got to college and a lot of uh, the friends I made, they were all state, but in like huge public schools. <laughs> and it's just like, man, I, I better not talk about my high school career too much. But it's I just I wouldn't have changed that because I got to experience everything. I played every sport I could play, and I think it. Uh, you know, you learn a lot through that, the winning, the losing, and the. It's you know I'm just glad I ended up in in music. So what was the name uh, or what was uh, you say class? Twenty five kids. Mm-hmm. What what class? Because I was single A. Yeah, we were a GISA a double A. And when I was there, but that goes up and down. It's gone down to single A since I've left and been up to triple A. So it's just, I think that kind of changes. But with 25 kids roughly in your class, yeah. where did you kind of fall when you graduated? And like, what, where were you in the rank? Uh, right around passing. That's what uh, I just, I don't know. School was never my. <laughs> just, 10, 12. I, was, I mean, I don't, I don't even know where I was. I just know I got out of there and, and got to Georgia Southern. But it, it honestly, I don't know. I was kind of a procrastinator where I would wait to have to ace the finals to get through, and I could do that. So it's a shame that I didn't probably apply myself better. But it was, I was all about sports back then, and um, you know, I'm, that's why I left Georgia Southern is to get into music. I knew I just school just wasn't wasn't for me. So. Did you study music at Georgia Southern? Or did you go to Georgia no. Southern and just start doing music? No, that's what that's kind of where I, I fell and started playing the bars there and just really loving being on stage. But I was a, a marketing major and, you know, I still think some of the things I don't remember a whole lot of, of what I learned, but I just I feel like those kind of classes, the business stuff, there is a business side of this. And, um, you know, I'd like to think I learned a few things there, but I, I did learn a lot just playing shows. And that's where I found out what I really love to do and, and wanted to be a songwriter by the time I, I left Georgia Southern. The album is named Stereotype. Here is track one. Oh, that was written with Jordan Schmidt, Michael Hardy, who's Hardy, yep. and you. And um, I wanted to bring that up because I was talking to Hardy a couple of days ago. And yeah, I saw he was in here. He, and I was talking to him. We were texting back and forth because he was listening to the show. And we, they had this segment where Lunchbox has this haunted doll. He's out at his house for a week. <laughs> and he is like, he believes he was haunted at one point. And he believes he they had to do some sage and get, get all these spirits away from him. Mm. So I ask you... Do you believe that things can be haunted? Wow. I mean, I don't. I don't. I hadn't had an experience like that, so I'm not saying You ever saying seen a ghost? Can't. You ever seen a ghost? I'm, no, I haven't. But that's something. Uh, you I ever mean, believe? In, you believe in aliens? I, I, I just kind of have <laughs> mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. Uh, unless we're talking about faith or so. I just kind of have Big to foot? see it to believe it, huh? Bigfoot. I mean, come on. I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I, what do y'all think? Y'all think things are haunted? I mean, obviously, you we, think things are haunted. We so. talk about this for hours and hours a day, right? It's rare that we yeah. get in freaking Cole Swindell and we get his opinions on things. Well, I don't want to get I, things to start haunting me because I don't believe it's real. But I don't, I, uh, I don't want to, I don't believe it's real, but I don't want to mess with it. Right. I don't either. No, I certainly would not want to do that. And ghosts, I mean, I think they're interesting. I love. You know, so stuff you've never like that seen on one. TV. But I've, seen a ghost. No, I've never. Not that I know of. No. I've what never, about angels? I, I do believe in that. Yes. Okay, so, so there is a, a spirit world. So there is a spirit. I, I do. I, I really do think that's what I'm saying. There's things that um, that happen in life that I think that you know. I'm just glad I do believe in that because it's. I, I just there's no explanation. I mean, just moments in life. I think I saw you said something about a year after your dad. I think you said that something happened to you. A right? bird. Was, she believes her parents are bird. birds. Now. No, well, that's I, well. I just. I, uh, no, well, my dad used a blue jay to to say hi to me. Yeah, and I, that's what I'm saying. And some people <laughs> may be like, "Come on," but that's what's me. the fun in that? You know, I really, I'm, it's just on. like yeah, for me. On. But when you go through that, I think you you look for little things like that, and it almost like they're just you might not ever pay attention to, it, but it's like they're everywhere. And if you don't take that and try to just know that, hey. Um, you know, I think they're they're saying, "Hey, I sure would want to send somebody a sign if I left too soon." So I, um, I do, I do believe in that. So, I certainly. love the romantic idea of that, but I would like to tell you another Amy story, just <laughs> so you can kind of put it all in a box. Um, she was walking down the street, and there was a guy doing uh, like a billboard sign, putting letters up. Mm-hmm. Like for example, you know, Wendy's has, "Hey, come buy the the burger, like ninety nine cents." Yeah. So she was under a guy doing that, and the letters N O fell, and she's like, "That just told me not to do something in my life." And she based her whole life. I decision. had just been contemplating it, and the letters. 
in an and, O. I mean, how do you not? Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm a more on that side of things. It's just hard not to. I'm like, man, maybe that's a sign. And maybe I overthink things, but that's, yeah. uh, that's okay. a real deal. Super successful Cole Swindell's on my side. There you mm-hmm. go. Well, and he's not on mine. And how do I feel and about that? And Cole, we should address <laughs> the fact. Even... Do you even, you seem to know a lot about the show if you follow along? But do you know that every time that there's a celebrity scam online, Bobby mentioned your name? Um, I don't doubt it. <laughs> I mean, can you, we do something about that? Right, and that's what I say. Jeez. Cole Swindell is not messaging you, asking for gift cards or money. Oh, and I'm not dating them. I mean, my that's girlfriend right. gets messages just hate me. I'm like, what? Do they really think they're talking to me? That's scary. I mean, it's, it's sad, and I just, I wish we could figure out something to do about that because it really does feel like I have more than anybody. And I'm like, why? Is it because I try to reach out to people and let, they think that they're going to believe it's me or, or what? But well, you do ask a lot of fans for gift cards, so they think when a fake one does that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's you but know, you something do I'm have trying to get out of yeah. an inordinate amount of people that fake as you, and it's yeah. often my reference. Like, uh, Cole Swindell is not messaging you. So, well, thank you for taking up for me. It's just because uh, you you certainly don't want people getting fooled like that. But okay, so you know, wait, there's people being Cole Swindell in quotes asking for gift cards, but there's also people being you dating other not people. Not dating. No, this, I'm just saying people that think they've been dating me and mm-hmm. like just. Telling me the for Courtney to back off, uh, just hateful stuff. Yeah. It's oh like, God. Same really? thing. I, we do that too. And I, I that wanted that. You know, we don't have to talk about it now. It's Ask whatever I just you want. want you to know, like, what you do about that stuff, because it's not. I, that's one of the reasons I think I've been private about things when I am dating people, because it's just I know how hateful people can be, and I know y'all deal with the same thing. So for me, I just don't know what you do. Other, I feel like it's kind of stopped a little bit now that people think it's not all a scam that I'm dating somebody else. I don't know. So. It's rough at first. Yeah. It was rough for us at first because she was, my wife entered into a world that she didn't quite know. What, I didn't, Exa- e- but I didn't either. I didn't either. Right. I didn't know That's, how mean people were going to be to her. Right. And then it's like, you know, Bobby was here with me. And I was like, so then it was just proving them wrong over and over again. Yeah. Not that she even believed it, but it's like this, then it was this is going to happen, and it's not ever true, but we can talk about it anytime you want. Yeah. That's I, another artist me. has come to me and said, hey, I know you're dealing with and they're dealing with it. Or someone photoshopped this artist's head perfectly onto a naked dude's body. Oh, yeah. And what? They were, yeah, and they were like, hey, so uh, your, your husband sent me this picture, and she was like, he doesn't have that slight birthmark on. And that's how she knew. But that's the links people will go to. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they Photoshop passports of my, like, whatever it may be. But that's just absolutely, uh, I don't know. I hate anybody has to go through it. But I think now that just seeing how it bothers people, it's uh, it's something that needs to be done about, I think. And it does make you value privacy a little more. It did for me as someone who was not private at all. But now that I have someone in my life that I don't want them to be uh, so uh, available. Absolutely. To be, so. I've always felt like that, but now, you know, I am happy and I, I don't mind putting it out there, but it's like we already, you know, try not to focus on the two negative comments out of hundreds of positive, but it just, it's hard to do. We're human and to see it affect somebody else you care about, that's what it really, I mean, they can dog me all day, but it's, it's different when they're doing that, doing that stuff. So I just wanted to, I don't know, I've always wanted to ask you what you were what you did, did about that, but I think it has gotten better. I think people realize like, well, we're not going to mess this up. So Some, move we, on to somebody else. You know? We get listeners like I gave two thousand bucks to this artist, yeah. and then I'm like, so here's the idea creatively. I don't know if you've heard, but um, Eddie and I have this little this little duo that's been moderately successful in the comedy world called I the Raging Idiots. Just missed y'all in Florida. You did same yeah. same festival. We're opening yep. for Garth. Yep. Uh, it, oh, dude, where uh, uh, and Razorback Stadium, April twenty third. If you want to come that's out, good. all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that would be uh, that would be amazing. But here's here's the situation. Okay. We write a song called Blue Check, a funny song. Yeah. And it's all about that, and don't trust people without the blue check and what they ask for. And if it meets the criteria of you thinking it's funny. Maybe you do a little collab with us, yeah. like John Party did when yeah. we did "Can't Say That in a Country Song." I would love to. I mean, there's nothing. There's no more important issue I want to deal with than than blue people check. acting like they got blue <laughs> checks. So I love. Uh, I love that idea. Hey, uh, one real question, like yeah. seriously, is like with the album. Why did it take so long to put out uh, "Stereotype"? Because it felt like it was a long time. Yeah, and I think um, you know people have been waiting. I've been waiting, and I obviously with the pandemic, a lot of things were put on hold, and that is includes me making an album, but. Also, without all the time on the road doing shows, um, I had time to just focus on writing more. And I, I think I, I don't know if I was personally in a rut. I, I was confused, of wondering if we'd ever get back to touring and doing all that stuff. But I also 
took a look at the songs I had and realized that there were friends of mine and other artists I respected putting out music, and I just didn't feel that way about the songs I had yet, and whether that was the production or the, the actual songs, whatever it was. So I just wanted to take a chance and, um, you know, work with some different people. There's so many talented people in this business, and Michael Carter, obviously, we've done everything I've done together, and I would not be where I am without him, but he still did Single Saturday Night, and then I also got to work with Zach Crowell, got to work with uh, Jordan Schmidt and Chris LaCourt, who uh, I'm all fans of them, so I think that's what makes this album a little different. I was able to do songs like I'm Gonna Let Her and Walk On Whiskey that are more stripped down and uh, kind of what I wanted to do, but then also have the, the tempo, the fun stuff, too, so... Cole, that, uh, that kind of put things on hold. Yeah, you and Laney will be performing the single yes, now yes. at the CMT Music Awards coming up uh, this week, April 11th on CBS, and then you're up for Video of the Year as well. So, hey, great and early call by you guys to get Laney on because she's wow, blown up man. since. Like, you you nailed it, and then she blew up. Uh, uh, yeah, but, I mean, I think we, you know, I was already a fan of her debut album, but it was, I think, her first, thing, you know, Things a Man Ought to Know, with Top Ten, and just the timing of everything. But now getting to know her... And just, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine anybody else singing that song. So uh, I'm a huge Lanny Wilson fan. I'm just happy for everything's going for her. I, we said that from the beginning that I think this song's going to do big things for both of us, and that's that's how it should be. So The new album is out. It is called Stereotype. Uh, Cole is passing me a note. It says, do you have any gift cards? No, I don't have any <laughs> Apple gift cards, bud. I, ask me on Instagram, and I'll, I'll hook yeah, you up over there. I'll, I'll shoot you a message from what, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, Cole, you're just a, a massive success. Uh, ten number ones as an artist, and many, many more. You write like crazy. You're just one of the the real creatives, and I appreciate you for that. Thank you, buddy. And uh, that's it. Good luck. Good, hope you win all the awards. Hope you sell out all the shows. Which you do have a bunch of shows coming up. Yeah, you guys can get tickets at coleswindell.com. He's got uh, starting April 19th all the way until October 8th on the books right now. So wherever you are, Cole's probably going to be near you. Go to coleswindell.com. Cole, thank you. Hey, thank you, bud. Good to talk to you. Thank you all for and, having me. And we'll see you soon. There you go. Right. Right. 